How's it going folks? Time for a bit of an update on the aquaponics system and I thought I'd start out with these fellas here. These are the Jade Perch, also known as Barku Grunters because they come from the Barku River system here in Queensland, Australia. Uh, they're a pretty fast growing fish actually. These guys will get up to what we call plate size or 500 grams, round about a pound in round about eight months. Uh, but typically they take round about a year. You always get a couple that grow a little bit fast, a couple that grow a little bit slow but the majority take around about 12 months to get to plate size. As you can probably tell on a few of their bellies, they are looking a little bit fat at the moment. That's because I've been able to feed them all the way through winter. I haven't given them away since we got these guys. I probably should pull some out very soon, weigh them up so I know that I'm feeding them the right amount. These guys really want to be fed, but we might do that at the end of the clip, hey? I'll give you a bit of a look at the rest of the system. Overall, she's going, you know, pretty well. The growth rates are fairly decent, I think. On the last garden update clip, I showed you these guys going in. Uh, that's the Pak Choi, a couple of different varieties, and I'm really impressed with the growth rates. They're coming, coming along nicely. The same with these beetroot that went in at the same time. Uh, these Mizunas only went in last night, though, after I got home from a bit of a trip out west. Um, so they're a little bit wilty. A little bit of transplant shock. This one was suffering the most, so I nipped off a couple of leaves there. Uh, the other plants in this bed are a cos variety lettuce that we're just letting go to seed, collect some seeds from it. Uh, that one gave us a couple of nice little tidy heads. We did a progressive harvest on that, so pretty impressed with that. The Italian flat leaf parsley is coming along rather nicely. I left a little bit um, down the side here to grow out. Uh, just to give the plants some energy and yeah we're starting to bush up nicely again we've only got two in here now i think we had about four or five um, before i pulled them out and over in that corner there we have some bay tree cuttings of bianca's just trying to strike in the system one or two look like they may have taken the rest look like they're sort of getting a bit crispy and we have some chinese water celery from alan and yeah, i really need to divide that up and a poor little lonely um, green onion here uh, around the corner here, we have some tatsoi. As you can see, we're progressively harvesting um, some Okinawan spinach. I'm just trying to strike in here to get ready for summer when they'll really take off some oregano and beetroot. A couple of kohlrabi are left in there and some warrigal greens. And you'll probably be able to notice that we're getting a little bit of um, yellowing and necrotic spots. Necrotic just means dying spots on some of these leaves. It's probably more noticeable on the uh, beetroot here. We're getting some intervenial chlorosis and some spotting. I think I've got a magnesium um, issue with the system. Basically, the calcium, uh, potassium and magnesium, they all need to be in balance to be available to the plant. Otherwise, they can call, uh, cause lockout meaning that um, yeah, they stop each other being able to be taken up by the plant. And I foolishly overdosed with potassium. Uh, so my hunch is that I have locked out the magnesium in the system because I have been adding two forms of magnesium to cover my bases. Um, one is the Epsom salts, uh, which works if you've got a higher pH and a lower pH. I've been using some dolomitic lime. Uh, dolomite lime has some magnesium. But yeah, I'm just not seeing um, much of an improvement. So I'm looking at getting some water tests done. Uh, just trying to work out who can do them uh, for us. I have rung up a couple of places, um, but yeah, um, one of them didn't even know what aquaponics was and then was trying to just do a heavy metals test to make sure I wasn't poisoning myself. So um, just ignored them. And yeah, I have asked online and a few people are giving me some leads. So I'll um, call them on Monday. But yeah, I'll do another clip on that and um, tell you what happens and what I find out with the testing and all that. Just quickly again, when it comes to intervenial chlorosis, um, there are other issues that can cause it. Nitrogen, if you have a nitrogen uh, or a nitrate deficiency, that can cause some yellowing of the leaves. Um, but yeah, definitely not an issue with this system. Have more than enough of the nitrate in there and iron as well. Iron will also cause some chlorosis in the leaves, but iron is an immobile element, meaning that once it's in the leaf, it can't be moved around. So you'll generally see the chlorosis starting in the newer leaves. With the magnesium, you tend to see it in the older leaves because it's a mobile element, meaning the plant can move it from one cell to another. Um, so it will take it from the older leaves and move it into the newer leaves. Therefore, you see the deficiency on the older leaf itself. So uh, it's just one of those things that helps you diagnose the issue. I'll actually leave a link below in the description to a video here on YouTube that's helped me a lot when it comes to diagnosing issues uh, with deficiency in the system and in the garden in general. And thanks again to Matthias for um, posting that originally over on Aquaponics Anonymous. 
Um, so that clip will hopefully help a few of you guys out. It's a good thing to watch just to get your head around the idea of what's a mobile, immobile and a partially mobile element just to help you diagnose what could be an issue in your system. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a look around the other side here. Uh, we have some Kangkong and I think this uh, is looking really shabby due to a couple of reasons. Firstly, the magnesium and secondly because it's just uh, winter it's been a bit cool here and it, it was shaded out by a couple of larger plants just here um, so yeah it's just not doing much chop at the moment but i dare say as soon as, as soon as things start to heat up again i'll give it a bit of a cut back and she'll just start flying out of the gate uh, anyone else who's in southeast queensland who's growing kangkong i'd be interested to know if yours is doing something similar if it's died right back or um, whether it's just maybe something to do with my magnesium that's causing this guy to stress out a bit. Uh, next to me here, I'll give you a look at our brand new bed. It is a flood and drain bed. Um, it's adding, acting more like a constant flow at the moment because I haven't dialed in the flow rate for the bell siphon, but I'm not too worried about that because I did plant out some seedlings last night and if the bed stays nice and full it just means they'll um, hopefully uh, take off a little bit better as you can see not much if any um, transplant shock on these guys a little bit of wilt on the mizuna and the marigold over there looks to be pretty happy uh, this bed here will primarily be planted out with some more leafy greens trying to get a bit of a cyclical um, sowing or secession sowing going on and i've also got some beetroot in a veggie pod down the back that I'm going to thin out and transplant into here as well. Uh, oh, also talking about that, um, these Tatsoi, I like them. Uh, Bianca's not too much of a fan of them, neither is Kira. Um, so what we're going to do is pretty much we'll harvest these guys out uh, this week. Um, I won't do a um, cut and come again style harvest like we have before. I'll just take a whole plant out and we'll use that. And then in this area here, we'll do the same thing, plant out some fast growing greens and some beetroot, um, just so we can get the plants going through. Uh, now, just to let you know how this guy was plumbed up, last clip I said I was going to put a um, satellite sump in. I decided against that. I had a length of pipe left over from the um, old aquaponics system. Um, this was a communal drain that ran from the twin fish tank into the radial flow settler. So all I've done is utilised one of the T-fittings there. Just come around this side to give you a bit of a better angle. I've utilised one of the T-fittings. Uh, it's got an end cap here so I can clean it out as well and I'm just running a 90 degree drain down into the opening here and that is flowing down into the sump tank itself and there's the water line coming back to um, fill up the bed. And just to let you know about why it's um, located here right underneath our clothesline next to Lizzie um, and that is because we are moving the clothesline getting a proper one put in and it's going to go where those drink holders are over there and the span of the, um, the line comes to about there. So if we have the bed on the end there, which would be great for the sunlight, it would get through the day. Uh, uh, it would just, yeah, cause real hassles with the clothes on the line. So we've tucked it around this side here. It's probably around about 11ish. Oh, I'd say it's about 10, 30, 11 at the moment. And it's getting a decent amount of sun still. So I dare say now the solstice has passed, we're gonna have more than enough sunlight just for the greens that we wanna grow in here. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, yeah, so it is a little bit high as well. And that is so the drain could run nicely into the sump tank because I didn't wanna take out too much of the sump tank, which is fine with me as well because I'm fairly tall and it comes up oh, just below my rib cage. So yeah, nice and easy for me to work on. It's fairly level, it doesn't have to be 100% level, but I do have it so it sort of slopes down towards that corner there. So hopefully the majority of the water will drain through and be taken out every time the um, bell siphon cycles. I did have to make up a new little bit of pipe work here. It just worked out a lot easier rather than having to um, use half a dozen more of these hose clamps to put different fittings on a T-piece that sat here. It just made it too long. Uh, this little PVC jobby is nice and compact. And um, yeah, so it does the job nicely. I thought I saw my little catfish down there. Oh, he's over the back. You can probably just make him out. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the system's going. I'll pop around and give these fish some feed, hey? Forgot to press record. It helps if you do that. Uh, these guys uh, have been pretty active feeders uh, all the way through winter, mainly because we've been popping the heater in there. There's one just down in there. Um, every time the temperature is dropping below probably around about four or five degrees 
Um, most days it's staying around about 16 and then by the afternoon it is warming up a fair bit. I actually popped the heater in last night so I could feed them this morning. And just to give you a bit of an idea on the water temp, we are sitting at, if we can get out of the sun, there we go, 19 degrees Celsius at the moment. So just sort of in the range where they are still able to metabolize the feed as they eat it. Um, so that's what's helped them put on a little bit of extra weight all the way through winter. Um, so yeah, overall pretty happy with the way they're going. So I will leave those fellas be and let them finish off the rest of their pellets in peace. Uh, I will be doing that water test, just got to organise it this coming week. So um, when I do post the clip to it, um, you should get a notification here on YouTube if your notifications are on. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to check it out, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button down there, pound on the bell icon, and fingers crossed YouTube will send you a notification. I would like to thank you all for coming along and checking out our clips on the um, aquaponics and the other garden down the back there. Uh, you might be able to see. Um, I really do appreciate you folks thumbing them up and sharing them around with your family and friends. Um, it's really great to catch up with you guys every Monday as well, uh, down in the comments section and answer your questions. I'm trying to keep on top of it more than I used to. So yeah, um, leave one down there if you feel like saying good day. I also need to thank those awesome folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and Farm Your Own Yard membership site. Thank you very much folks for your continuing support. Really do appreciate it. And a big thanks to the super contributors. Links to their sites and pages are down in the description down below. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're well and happy, and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks, and have a top one. So I mucked around with the bell siphon after I finished filming the clip yesterday and came up with this little jobby. So let me know in the comments section down below if you want a closer look at this one, and also a clip with a couple of pointers on using bell siphons. Cheers, all.